There was a great recent episode on the Carmudgeon Show with Jason Camisa and Derek Tam hyphen Scott. And they covered a few great points, but there's some more things I want to add because I think there's some more benefit here that young car enthusiasts can derive from these conversations. And it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. So for those who didn't actually watch the episode, let me give you a quick synopsis. Camisa is essentially arguing that the cheap cars of any era, the cheap cars for the teenagers and the early 20 year olds in 2000 is gonna be different than 2020 just based on what is desirable at that time, how old the car is. You know, an E30 in 2005 is gonna be a very different price than an E30 in 2024, as an example. And Hyphen is essentially saying that now is the time where it's the worst to be a car enthusiast because financially we're just totally fucked over. Educational debt is at all time highs because college costs just keep rising at insane rates. Um, wage stagnation, inflation, et cetera, et cetera. People can't afford homes. And one statistic that I've actually seen elsewhere is that the average age of a home buyer, a first, first home buyer, was 30 in the year 2010. And now it's something like 34, almost 35. So it's getting harder and harder to, to reach those financial milestones in this day and age. Those are the facts, you can't really argue that. Both of them absolutely have valid points, but I don't think the focus of the conversation is really very useful or beneficial to young car enthusiasts. Because yes, it is true that certain cars that you could get for way cheaper 15 years ago, you're never gonna get them again at that same price. And it's also true that young people are struggling financially, but it's not all doom and gloom. Now the first point I wanna make, and the first thing you have to understand to understand the rest of this video is that people love complaining. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's cars, whether it's finances, whether it's dating, whether it's, there's always something to complain about. Even when things are largely getting better, people will find a way to complain about things. And the reason people love complaining so much is that if I can point the finger at something else external, something systematic, something that is not about me, I don't have to take fault or be at blame for the issues in my life. I can say, hey, it's not my fault, is that the system is rigged against me. It's not, you know, if I'm not achieving my financial goals, my fitness goals, my mental health goals, my social goals, my dating relationship goals, whatever it is, I can just point the finger and say, it's not on me, it's not my fault. So are there valid reasons for young people to complain about the financial situation that they're in right now? 100%, absolutely, can't deny that. But that doesn't justify having piss poor financial discipline and making poor purchasing decisions about your cars. Just because things are harder doesn't mean you should lower your standards and do shittier things that are gonna put you in a worse situation long term. That doesn't make sense. Now people also don't like change. When ABS first came out decades ago, when traction control first came out decades ago, a lot of people were saying, ah, I don't need that stuff. I'm gonna drive my car like a real man. No ABS, no traction control. I don't need no nannies. I mean, look at the GR86. I'm in the, in the second gen GR86 right now. First gen FRS GT86. People are like, oh my God, this new one looks horrible. What are you guys, blind? The second gen has always looked better than the first gen. But a lot of people just have this, this very strong bias against change, against things that are new and different. So people were saying this new gen looks terrible when it's, it's just not the case. There's a saying I frequently use on the Med School Insiders YouTube channel, which is that statistics apply to populations, not to individuals. So on a population level, you can say, yes, things are, you know, smokers are much more likely to have lung cancer but you can't look at a single smoker and say, this person is 100% gonna die from lung cancer. It doesn't work that way. Obviously, I'm not saying you should go smoke, but statistics apply to populations, not to individuals. That's a very important point to understand. And we're gonna come back to this shortly, but next is the comparison game. And I think the biggest reason why it's so much harder to be a car enthusiast now, a young car enthusiast without much purchasing power now, is simply because of the comparison game. Now again, you can point the finger and say, hey, it's not my fault, it's social media. Hey, it's not my fault, it's the way that the culture is moving. You can point the blame, but ultimately it is your responsibility. The shit in your life is your responsibility. So if you choose to play that game, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You're gonna be less happy if you're playing the comparison game. Yes, with social media and Instagram, it's a lot about 
what car you're driving, how hard you can flex, whatever silly nonsense games people are playing there. But ultimately, if you are a car enthusiast, a driving enthusiast, you can find so much value and not play that game. You are in complete control of your values. If you wanna value driving experiences, driver skill, engagement, fun, scenic roads, things like that, you don't need a massive budget. You don't need some super fast $80,000 BMW M car. You don't need to go fast in a straight line. That requires no skill, who gives a shit? The other thing about the comparison game is understand that everyone has different situations. You know, I remember this guy in college, one year older than me. I was in college 2008 to 2012, so he must have been 2007 to 2011. His parents bought him a brand new G35. At that time, that car was super f***ing hot, right? To be a college student and get that sports car, the same guy. So again, people love complaining and comparison game, right? So I have never once looked at him, at, even when I was in college, and said, wow, I wish that I had a G35 like him. That's so cool. Like, damn, I got to do that. No, I was like, hey, this guy clearly comes from a privileged background. Good for him. I'm playing a different game with different pros and cons. I can write my own story. So I can say, hey, I'm not going to have a G35 when I'm in college, but guess what? I'm going to work up to buy my own sports car and I can say that it's 100% mine, not handed to me by one of my parents. So, by the way, the same guy got drunk one day, him and a few other guys, and they're like complaining, like he was crying about how his little sister got brand new clothes and how he always had older clothes or hand-me-downs from his dad or it's... It was like, it was so bizarre. These guys were like all in gated communities, so privileged. And one guy's complaining about how he got caught with the DUI. Anyway, uh, you know, have, pers have some perspective, right? I'm privileged in that I was born and raised in the US. I went to good public schools. I, I understand that. But sometimes you guys are just like so out there and so just out of touch that, uh, you know, I, I remember just sitting there on the side and being like, uh, do these guys not realize how good they have it? And at the time, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment with my mom and brother, sharing a bed with my mom as a young adult, uh, recently diagnosed with a long-term condition that I had, it was no fault of my own, but it was my responsibility, yada, 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 all these problems, right? So anyways, I digress. I just like, the whole entitlement and being spoiled and not being grateful for what you have is, is very off-putting to me. So the advice I have for young car enthusiasts, number one, choose your values carefully. Don't look at the, the person who drives whatever fancy car. You don't know their actual position. A lot of people, a lot of people have help that you probably don't have, and that's okay. Don't compare yourselves to them. I know probably about a dozen of my friends who own homes that are in their uh, you know, 30s, and literally, I know one of the, no, I know two of them that bought the home by themselves, the other 10, had help with a down payment covered by their parents, or their parents took care of their med school loans entirely, or they have a trust fund and they've received uh, you know one or two million dollars since then. These are the people I know in my circle that have bought homes. Obviously it's gonna be different, but you don't know other people's stories, you don't know their situations. I know one guy who bought his home in his late 20s in SoCal, but he has like three roommates to you know cover the cost of the, of the, the mortgage and such. And I know another guy who bought his home, but he was like 39 when he bought his home. And every other person I know, <laughs> all of my friends have had some help. Similarly, don't compare your car to theirs. Because again, different situations and you're in this race against yourself. I think there's value to comparing yourself to others in competition, but when you're having different starting points, it's kind of silly to beat on yourself when you're not at that same starting point as them. At the finish, hopefully you can close the gap if you're gonna be hardworking, you have some aspirations to own a Porsche GT3 or whatever it is. But don't compare the starting point. And when you're in your late teens to early 20s, you're comparing your starting points. So don't try to find the flashiest, coolest car. Choose your values carefully and find a car instead that allows you to enjoy the driving experience. That's engaging. And we don't have as many options as prior years. Sure, but guess what? You still got the, the FRS, BRZ, the first gen, the second gen GR86, the Miata. There are a lot of cars that are affordable, that are reasonable. And okay, if you want more power, then go the muscle car route, but you're gonna lose some of the nuance, some of the balance, some of the, the handling characteristics but there's something out there for everyone. You don't have to get the most expensive car. When I was, when my business really took off and I had a great year in 2020, I wanted to buy myself a Porsche GT4. 
and I'm glad I didn't because that would have been the wrong financial decision. I should have first bought a home and I did buy a home. I, buy, I bought a home at the beginning of 2021 and I'm glad I did that. And now, multiple years later, I'm finally getting my Lotus Amira and I'm in my early 30s, almost mid 30s. You know, I do have other friends that have nicer homes, that have nicer cars, and they got those much younger than me. But guess what? Different starting points. So why, why should I beat myself up? Why should I care so much? And finally, have an empowered mindset. Have a growth mindset. Because even though things are harder in the big picture, if you're a hardworking guy, it is easier than ever to stand out. Because you have all these resources at your fingertips. You got... Look at the content that Alex Hormozzi is putting out for free. Amazing stuff. His book is phenomenal. You can learn so much about entrepreneurship if you want to take that route through free resources online or very cheap resources, very cheap books. And that's something that you should definitely take advantage of. It is such an incredible opportunity. I mean, I have no entrepreneurial background or training, schooling. You just figure it out as you go. And you make some mistakes along the way, but if you are diligent and hardworking, you can get yourself to a position that beats the odds. Statistics apply to populations, not to individuals. And if you're feeling defeated, if you're feeling like things are too hard, then I urge you to find some role models. Go online, find people that are similar to you in whatever way. When I first got diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, I was crushed. It was such a challenging time in my life. But I looked at, you know, these other, um, these, these athletes or these successful people who have IBD. Like, wow, if they can do it, I can do it too. And we all have different struggles. It's not about measuring who has the biggest struggle versus the smallest struggle. I mean, please do keep some perspective. Don't cry in your G35 when you, because you don't get enough new clothes as a teenager from your parents. Or at least if you're gonna do that, don't cry about it in front of people who are far less fortunate than you. But understand that who you associate with and the inputs you have, whether it's the people you spend time with or the videos you watch or the books you read or the podcasts you listen to, they're going to influence your perspective. And if you choose garbage inputs, you're going to have a garbage perspective. So choose carefully. My friends, I think that it is a great time to be a car enthusiast. I think that many of us approach the world at large in too far of a, too much of a cynical way. And I think there's so much to be grateful of. There are a lot of great things happening. And regardless of your position and regardless of your goals, I think we have a lot to be thankful for. My friends, let me know with a comment down below. What do you think? Much love, and I'll see you all in the next one.